enjoy. Welcome to the stage with me, Usola Ajao. Over to you, Ma. Thank you very much. Um, I hope everybody can hear me okay. Um, a lot of what I was going to touch on has already been handled by um, Mr. Michael, and I am so excited to be here and to be with you guys. Yes, I've been dealing with data for, well, yeah, almost two decades now, um, thrown in at the deep end, having to deal with huge, huge data sets manipulate them, make analysis, make recommendations. Um, yeah, next year will be my 20th year working with data. Um, and I'm very excited to be able to share, you know, the knowledge that I have. Very much, in fact, if you go away with anything today, I want you to know that data analysis is something that you've already been doing. It's just that you've not been using the most popular tools. If you know how to look at a list of items on Instagram and choose the cheapest one, that's data analysis. Data analysis does not start when you have yards and yards of information. Every single thing we look at is data, and we've already been doing that analysis. Now, all this means is that we are, we are coming on this journey to empower ourselves with the tools, all right? So let me use cooking as an example. I love cooking. I know not everybody loves cooking, but I actually enjoy cooking very much. So some people like to cook rice. Some people like to cook soup, native soup. Some people like to cook, um, to fry eggs. Some people, their specialty is boiling water. Now, apart from the different things that you can cook, so the things you can cook are like, okay, you're cooking, like Mr. Michael said, you're cooking EdTech or you're cooking FinTech. Or in fact, I know of a data analyst in the US who became a data analyst. He didn't plan to become a data analyst. What happened was when COVID came up, people were falling sick and dying, falling sick and dying, and in his house on his own. He decided that he wanted to just develop, to just look at the information and begin to, to imagine. If people are dying at this rate, then okay, the number of people that will most likely survive in this area is so, so so percentage using the information that he could see online and he began to do some kind of analysis and that was how a in fact somebody saw what he was doing just for fun not even fun because covid was not fun but just for his own personal uh, are we going to die or are we going to live and then somebody said uh, do you know that this thing you are doing is what they are looking for people to come and do and that's how he's working for the u.s government today he's a nigerian like you and i he didn't plan it it just happened so there are so many areas of tech. The way somebody likes cooking ever, there's FinTech. The way somebody else likes cooking ever, there is payroll, um, payroll analysis, HR analysis, all kinds of analysis when it comes to data. It's only the type of data that changes the name before the analysis. Now, I've talked about the different kind of food you can cook. But then there are also the different things you can use to cook. Some people know how to use frying pan but they don't know how to use air fryer. Some people know how to use air fryer, but they don't know how to use pressure cooker. That's just the same way the data tools are. The, the, the prestige that comes from being a data, imagine I came, I came here and I say, oh, I'm a very good cook. I'm the best cook in the world. And they say, okay, come and use this pressure cooker to cook meat. And I say, ah, I've never seen pressure cooker before in my life. Oh. Everybody will just, you may not say anything, but you just swallow saliva that, mm. Is like something is missing in this person's head. You understand? There are tools that are very basic that everybody in the data analysis space should know how to use. And there are tools that are more sophisticated. And then there are tools that are at the height of it that, okay, once you've gotten to this point, we know that, oh, you are, you are up there. You are the people that should be leading the charge in data analysis. And that's just it. So if you have an interest in this and you are ready to learn, there is no barrier to entry. One of the things I love most about data analysis is that there is no, um, there, there's nothing stopping you. And there, there are no tools that are so hard to get, so to speak. The way the tech space is expanding now, there are tools for free all over the internet. All you need to do is look for it. And that's part of why we have come together to, to bring this to you, so that you have a guided journey, as opposed to you just sitting in your house saying, ah, it would have been nice if I know how to be a data analyst, 
Meanwhile, everything you need is already there. All you need is somebody to point you along the journey. So that's why we are here. And I'm very, very glad to meet all of you. And I hope that we will all have many, 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 many more meetings like this where we actually dive deep into data and at the end of the day, come out with our certifications for it. Now, I'm going to share some slides very briefly. Um, so I'm going to stop. Just give me a second to stop my video, share some slides. Okay. All right, please confirm if you can see my slide. Yes, I see your slides. Yes, we can see your slides. All right. So we've already talked about an introduction to data analysis. Basically, data is information. Data is just bits of information every little information that you can count together yeah and there's no there's no there's nothing fantastic in it data is data that's like somebody telling you i'm tall i'm short i'm fat i'm thin it's just information data is nothing until you do something with data yeah and what data analysis is is taking all that information looking at it and making sense of it come out with information and come out with conclusions that can help people take decisions to solve problems. Now, the reason why the fellow I spoke about was able to get a job as a data analyst, even though he wasn't looking for it, was that he was providing solutions to a problem that was affecting the whole nation, in fact, the whole world at the time. What is the spread of this virus like? There had never been a virus like it, but so nobody could predict how it was moving, but somebody somewhere was tracking it and developing a model. So data, if he had only sat down in his house and looked at how many people were dying and said, ah, these people are really dying, they're dying no way, we will not die in Jesus' name. He has not solved any problem. Data analysis is not just collecting data, but it's taking data, transforming it, and using it to solve problems, yeah? I want to talk briefly about big data. Um, and Mr. Michael spoke about this earlier. He talked about how the world is expanding. The truth of the matter is that there is so much information available today. In truth, that information was always available. But what happened was that we didn't know. Like, I could be here in my house, and I can say, ah, OK, there's no light. But I don't know that somewhere in Ghana, there's also another place that there is no light. Today. We can know this information because we have something called an internet. And the internet connects people from all over the world, connects data from all over the world. So somebody was asking about real estate and how useful data analysis can be for real estate. I'm happy to tell you that data analysis is one of the areas that you can easily, easily, easily see how data, um, how um, data, real estate is one of the areas where you can see how data analysis can quickly take you away from the other people in the industry. Because if you have the data of how much, for example, how much each item is required to build a house in this area versus this area, how much per square meter this area land costs versus this area, you are no longer just talking, but you have data to back up your speech and your marketing and everything you're doing. That's just the way it is for every industry. Anything you're doing, there's data behind it. Either you are the one creating the data or there are other people ahead of you who have already created it. And that's, that's what we mean when we talk about big data. People like Google, people like Apple, people like Nestle, like, um, Microsoft, all these companies, they have so much information across the globe. Um, when we get into it, you guys will be introduced to BigQuery. That's one of the SQL um, tools. And you can see some data sets there that show you information from things like the census, global census of so, 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 yeah. The, 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 somebody talked about oceanography, the current 
weather patterns in Susu -so area and how they have changed over the last decade, year by year, how the animals in that area have changed year by year. All of this information is some, it, these are things that were in existence, but because then we didn't really have things like the internet and the, you know, the support to bring the information together. Now we do. So there will always, and that data is expanding, is multiplying day by day. So it's not something that you just, um, we are just jumping into. This is a field that is going to continue to grow for the foreseeable future because every day data is multiplying. In the past, somebody would just take a picture and have it on his phone, maybe five, 10 years ago, you have the picture, you have it on your phone. Right now you have a picture, you put it on the cloud. You make a copy, you send it to your friend, that person puts it on the cloud, puts it in their email, and that data, that same picture is five times on the internet, 10 times on, 20 times on the internet. Somebody has to be talking about how do we ensure that all this data doesn't get lost, doesn't get stolen, that it is properly codified, that we can access it when we want to and how we want to, that it's in the right format, and that it can even be used in future for the right purposes and not be used for the wrong purposes. So there's so much when it comes to, to data that I, I really want to encourage you guys to get comfortable, just get comfortable with understanding what data is and, and how it's going to help us, yeah? So this slide just talks about how organizations make decisions based on data. If I know, for example, that people come in on Sunday, like every day I have, what, 100,000 people coming to my website, but on a Sunday, I have 300,000 people coming to my website. I'll make sure that no matter what happens, I have times three of the quantity that I normally have for sale on a normal day. Because I already have the data to know that, oh, you should project a times three sale today. And that's just how data helps us identify patterns, trends, and make predictions for future. All right? I've talked about big data already. Big data comes in, the thing about it is volumes, huge, huge, huge volumes. We're talking about trillions and trillions of, of, of bits of data, so much variety, and it's coming in so fast that there is no point anybody even taking paper and barrel to say, oh, we want to, we want to analyze how it's, don't bother. As it's coming in, we just need to create a framework that when we pull information, it gives us the right thing. For example, look at your Google search box. All over the world, all the information that is being put onto the internet, all you have to do is open Google search box and type in T-E-C-H-I-N-T-R-A. It will already start giving you hints. Okay, is it tech in transit? Is it this? No matter where the person put the information from, it's already there. Imagine if you had to go physically to where the information was being created. In fact, life would have would have moved on a long time ago. Yeah. So we, we I, I know Mr. Michael talked earlier about being a data scientist, about being um, a data engineer. These are just some options that people have. Data analysis is a beginning. You can decide to, from there, become a data engineer. You can decide you want to move into AI. Yeah, data is one of the building blocks of AI. You want to move into machine learning. Because think about it. All of these predictive models work based on the data that has been given to them, on the data models that have been created already. Yeah, so these are options we have, depending on how, how you like to use your tools, what kind of tools you like to use. Do you like to code? Are you interested in creating code? Are you interested in helping businesses solve business problems? Are you interested in creating AI, creating um, models that can actually work on their own as much as possible? So these are options for anybody that is interested in, in data analysis. Okay, so we've, we've spoken about data analysis and data and how data can, you know, how we represent data, the structured data, unstructured data, all of this stuff is going to be touched on in detail in our training, which we will start immediately after this um, meeting. So these slides are also going to be made available to you. This is just an introduction for you to, to familiarize yourself with. All right.
I'm just going to this side out the leaves. All right. So this is, um, this is where I think a lot of people just need to, to settle down on. One of the major, the major tools that we have for that one is the tool box is not the trust of the tool. Yeah. Can we mute Ezeani Albert, please? Yeah. I'm I'm muted already. Okay, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my presentation now. All right. So I was talking about Microsoft Excel. And I, this is how I explain Excel to my younger students. It's just like having a book and a biro. The only difference between Microsoft Excel and a paper and biro is that instead of you having to carry calculator with your paper and biro, the calculator is inside the paper and biro in Excel. It's that simple. So you have a list of customers and how much they are owing you. Instead of you carrying calculator to begin to add all of them up, Excel will add everything for you if you ask it. Ask it the average, it will tell you. Ask it for weighted average, it will tell you. Tell it that you want it to draw a pie chart, it will draw it for you. It's very helpful. It's a wonderful tool, it's very versatile, and it is the building block. Once you can, you can actually begin to tell how good of a data analyst somebody is going to be depending on how grounded they are in Excel. If you go for an interview at any point and they ask you, if you go for a job as a data analyst and they ask you about your Microsoft Excel level and you say, oh yeah, you are a beginner or you are intermediate, immediately you are telling them that you are not a data analyst. Any data analyst, you should be ready to say, oh yes, I have advanced Microsoft Excel skills. And the reason is because every single thing you see under Microsoft Excel is built on Microsoft Excel. It's the same logic, it's the same thinking. So if you are able to use and manipulate data in Microsoft Excel, the chances are you will do excellently well, no matter the kind of tool, no matter the kind of environment that you are thrown into. Even programming and coding, it starts from Microsoft Excel. Once you are able to say, ah, okay, look through all these customers. If the amount they are owing me is more than $1,000, say, forgive. If it is, if it is less than $1,000, sorry, say, forgive. If it is more than $1,000, say, arrest. It is that simple. Just creating an if statement like that, it looks simple in Excel, but this is the same logic that you are going to use when you get to SQL and when you get to Python, when you begin to write code. Can we mute all for now, please? Hi, everyone. Musala, if you are speaking, your mic is muted. Oh, wow. I've been speaking for a while. Sorry about that. <laughs> OK. So you can All right. Your All right. Is my screen still shared? No, please. You have to do that again. OK, let me stop. I can see your screen. <laughs> Yeah, my just
All right, can you see it now? Yes, I can see it. Yes, yes, you can see it. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I was saying how if you 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 can have data and you can have the information, but when you need it, when you need to pass information across to the people who are going to take decisions, it is most helpful if you are able to visualize. So instead of saying there are 300 people here, 400 people here, 1,000 here, what you can do is just show them a chart. And they can see at a glance that, oh, OK, this first one is here. Then, ah, which one is this very long one? Ah, Lagos, OK, it's true. There are more people in Lagos. A chart helps people see very easily what you would have used, how many hours to explain. The old adage, adage says, a picture is worth a 1,000 words. So having the tools that help you with visualization, those are Tableau, your Power BI, Microsoft Excel as well, but you know, Microsoft Excel is not as sophisticated as some of these other newer tools because you know it's older. But every day there are new advancements being made. Yeah. And so visualization is an area that we're also going to cover and the tools under visualization. And I want to say that for each and every one of these tools, you can actually develop yourself to a point where you have a certification for that tool. Just the same way somebody can say, ah, no, when it comes to pressure cooker, there is nothing somebody cannot use pressure cooker to make. I can do it with pressure cooker. Some people, all they know how to use pressure cooker to cook is beans, and it's fine. They are using it in their life. Their life is fine. They are not suffering. But there are some people that with that same pressure cooker, they will bake cake. And you're like, how did they do it? In fact, you're like, why did they do it? But just to show you that they have the ability, when it comes to this particular tool, there is nothing I cannot do. That's the same way it is for these tools. You can develop yourself in each of these tools to a point where you can use, you can use Microsoft Excel to write code. Yeah, you can become a certified Microsoft Excel user. You have the certification that anywhere in the world, people see you, they will re remove their tab that, oh, okay, you are welcome. The same for Python, the same for SQL, all these things. You, Power BI, you have certification exams that you can do. When you do it, you know that ah, once you pass, the certification is yours. Nobody can take it away from you. And it's something that companies respect because they can, it's not, you, you, you don't just stand up and say, oh, I have a Microsoft Excel certification. They know that for you to have the certification, no, you know Excel. Yeah, so it depends on, the individual, how much time you are ready to put in on each one of these tools, okay? Right, we talked about some of these earlier. I just wanted to highlight again, we talked about the data analyst, how you can um, identify trends and insights. We talked about the data science a little bit. So data science helps, what they do is things like create an algorithm to say, oh, if based on what we have been seeing, most times when people say, I want, the top three answers from all the data I have looked at, I want, the next word is two, or the next word is A, or the next word is you. Those are the kind of things that you see play out in your Google search box or on your phone when you're doing predictive, um, when you're typing. And a, and a prediction comes up before you are finished typing, the next word is suggesting to you based on the data that it has, based on what you have been doing in the past. It is a data scientist that comes up with all those models to say, okay, from all this data we have looked at, this is what I predict for the next, this is, this is a model that I'm saying, okay, we can use, yeah? Business intelligence is, is still very much data, creating things like dashboards, for the business owners to see, okay, this is how the business is doing, and compare this week with last week, compare this month with last month, compare the year and all of that. It, there's a lot of visualization in business intelligence and prediction, yeah? Data engineer, just know that at this point, you're talking about systems and databases. At this point, you are the one creating where data will be stored. So you need to understand what the data is like, what kind of data will be generated so that you know how to store it. If we are doing, um, if we are having a financial, a business, a business data storehouse being built, there's no point in me creating a storehouse for MP3s. I need to know the kind of data 
and understand it in order to know the kind of structure that will be used to maintain that data. Same for data architecture. Machine learning is like a senior data scientist. Yeah, it's just, it, it just takes it to the next level. All right. Okay. So again, thank you so much for coming on this journey with us. You will not regret it. I want to put in at this point that, you know, we've said over and over again that this is, um, this is a volunteer based program. So everybody that you see in here, nobody's getting paid, which is why we're asking for as many people as can to volunteer to help in whatever way you can, because you'll be helping somebody like yourself. Don't say, oh, I don't know anything or I can't do anything. Whatever you know, whatever you can do, no matter how little it is, please volunteer and help us so that we can help even more people. You know, I'm glad that you are here because you heard about it and you came. There are still so many people out there who don't even know that there's such a program and who are wishing that they could be, you know, they could be fortunate enough to be connected with a program like this. So please, as much as you can, volunteer, partner with us and help us on this journey to help you. Thank you very, very much. Um, that brings me to the end of my presentation. Um, does anybody have any questions before I hand over to Ore? Any okay. questions? Um, Ibrahim Yusuf. See, I was actually going to say, because I know a lot of people ask questions in that direction what the flow of the class will be going forward. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for that, Michael. So the way the class is gonna be structured is we will have our meetings. We'll have a meeting where we, you know, come together and we do, we, we learn and then we practice. I, so I show you what we're trying to do and then you do it yourself and I walk you through. And then after that, during the week, so we're gonna be making use primarily of our WhatsApp group. During the week, what you have to do is make sure that everything you have learned, you practice it during the week. During the week, we're gonna give you um, challenges, quizzes, practicals, so that you don't lose what you have learned. One of the things we have seen is that when you only have a Saturday, Saturday meeting, it's very easy for you to forget what you were told, what you did, especially if you did it just once. Somebody says, oh, create this and you created it and you are happy. A lot of times, you know, people are very excited and very happy, but it's not something they do on a daily basis. So by the next Saturday, you are moving on to something else and you've already kind of started forgetting what you did last week. So during the week, I cannot emphasize enough, those assignments, those practices, those quizzes, everything we, we give on the, on the chat to do, please take them 157% serious. Take them as your priority. Don't miss any one of them for any reason. Yeah, and then on, on the next Saturday, we will review briefly if, that, if there were any challenges during the week, we should have you know, cover that during the week, but we'll have a quick recap before we move into the next week's class. Yes, um, Bashanru, yes, we will have the recording of each class shared as well, yeah. Okay, somebody was going to, okay. Ibrahim Yusuf. Uh, okay, thank you, Busala, for that wonderful uh, presentation, insight into uh, data analyst and uh, other training uh, professions and uh, skills needed. So my question, uh, uh, my query is, uh, for one to be a successful data uh, analyst, uh, does one need to have uh, a background of statistics or a background of... Uh, so I think that's uh, statistics and uh, how to work with data. Thank you. 
Okay, so um, if I get you right, what you're asking me is if you can become a data analyst if you did not study statistics at some point in the past. And the, the answer is 100% yes. Um, you start from where you start from, yeah? At some point, we will do some work with statistics. And um, this is a good, this is a good um, question because it allows me to say something I forgot to say while I was doing the presentation. Uh, and I really hope that you guys understand the importance of this. But part of the program is that every single one of us, every single one of us will be given links to sign up for certain programs that have either financial aid or sponsorship or scholarship. And the idea is that as you begin to and you begin to do those programs, you have your certifications. I'm talking about international certification you will have to prove that you have signed up for it. At any point you need help, we are here to help you along the way. But you will sign up for it and you will continue as we go on that journey. You will do everything you need to do to get that certification, those certifications. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Busola. Sorry, can I, can I say something? Yeah, go ahead, please. Yes, thank you very much. I, you've actually said so much, and um, it's really very, very exciting. Uh, basically, like I said earlier, I've actually uh, maybe. Sure, I can go. Sorry. So, can you hear me? We can hear you. Please go ahead. So basically, like I was saying earlier, when before the whole in, um, program started, like um, I've actually been into the IT for 14 years before I left the job into marketing. And um, I understand basically everything about the, uh, um, the spreadsheet and the back end, which is the Excel, the SQL and all of that even I have to design an Excel table for myself personally to do my own float so that I can actually do my um, data analysis on myself in the office because I have a laptop of myself so I use my experience to do all of that so but in all of these uh, basically are we going to be released because I know the, um, uh, the spreadsheet are actually the back end of every application but are we going to relating this with the front end in terms of development, or are we? Is this going to be strictly on the spreadsheet, um, database, SQL, and all of that alone? Do you understand my question? I do understand your question. It is a great question. For us, for this cohort, we are not doing any development as part of this cohort. However, if there is any, at any point you want to do that, that's fine and that's great. And you know, there are mentors in-house in the tech in transit community that can help you along that path. For us, we are going to be focusing primarily on the tools we have described, the, the data analysis tools. But of course, I mean, um, this is just an aside. Um, I was telling somebody recently about the Power Up program. The Power Up program is, I don't know if you know about it, Microsoft Power Up, but it is just a way of making people, you know, teaching people about the Power Up uh, family. So you have the Power BI, you have Power Automate, you have Power Apps and, and the rest of them, and just showing you what you can create with them. And it, it blew people's minds to understand that you can actually create an app without knowing anything about coding or even power bi yeah so again it's not part of what this cohort for data analysis will cover but there is space in the tech in transit community for you to learn that so i would i would really recommend that you speak to to one of one of us after this meeting please yeah thank you All right. okay Bukola, um my own question is pretty basic. Um, thank you for breaking it down for us in terms of the data analysis value chain. 
So my basic question is, um, where does the role of a database administrator fall? Because I didn't see it on the slide. So is it that it's not part of the data analysis family? And if it's not, can you just um, explain what the database administrator is all about? It's on the slide. It's on the slide. It's just not one of the... Uh, more glamorous ones, but it's absolutely in there. Everything starts on the understanding of data. I'll share the slides so you don't know. Are you, are you in the, the data analysis group? Yeah, you must be. Yeah, we'll put it on, on the group chat. Yeah. Um, I think the only person left is Abdul Kadir. All right. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, sorry, I'm uh, due to network reason. I was unable to join on time, so I. This can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right, I was unable to join on time, so I I only want to ask, or probably if it has been said earlier, or maybe you should kindly please, uh, possibly help us, uh, you know, emphasize more on. Uh, the necessary things and the basic things that we need to get set, you know, to for smooth uh, learning for ourselves, like uh, internet connection. We should get our laptop. What other tools or this thing that is? Okay, um, I can't hear you anymore, Abdul Kadir, but I, got, I think I got the gist of your question. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much. That is a fantastic question. And it's something I, I planned to touch on as well. Everyone, please, 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 because I've got people in my DMs asking me, you know, they don't have a laptop, um, what can we do? You can't run this training without a laptop. You will definitely need a laptop. In fact, you need a laptop that is operating ideally on Windows 10 or Windows 11. All of this will be, will be put on the, on the group chat as well. Windows 10 or Windows 11. You should have ideally an Office 365. Uh, was my question? Hello? Yes. Going on clear, please. Right. Yeah, we should have an Office 365. Very, very recent function of, of office so that you know what we are doing for this will not be left behind. Um, I, was, I was doing a training earlier today, and um, you know, I was trying to show somebody X lookup, and he said, Oh, there's no X lookup on the system. I said, That's because you have an old Excel, new Excel, there's H lookup, there's V lookup, there's X lookup. And these things are changing so rapidly. In fact, um, just last week or two weeks ago, we heard that there is um, Microsoft has now added a new functionality to Excel, which is Python in Excel. So you don't even have to to say, oh, I have my data in Python, or I, I, or I want to do analysis from Python and move it to Excel or vice versa. Right there in Excel, you're going to be able to do everything you wanted to do in Python. And, and you know, that's a huge, huge development. I, I, as much as possible, get the latest version of Microsoft you can get, get the most recent laptop you can get, make sure you defragment it, you know, remove every um, virus, cleanse it, do your checks, clear space, enough space, data, there's no way we can do a data analysis track without having huge huge sets of data and if we are downloading data we say okay take this file and it's always oh, five gig and you are still there and your your system is rolling and rolling let's also recite our hardware and, and software aha uh -huh. there they are okay all right i think i'm handing over to you thank you All right, thank you very much, Busola, for that insightful presentation. And thank you for providing clarity to the 
to the questions that were asked. I'm sure everybody appreciates that. And yeah, get up and excited to begin this data analysis journey. So just to do a recap of all we have engaged with today, we gave an introduction by saying that we are tech in transit and basically we are tech enablers for those who are trying to transition from tech, those who don't have a background in tech, those who are beginners. I want to switch roles from the roles they currently are in to a tech role, specifically data analysis. This is a good track for you to be a part of and we welcome you once again. We also had a clarity session for those of us who didn't have the data, who don't, let me say it this way, who um, data analysis didn't come out for after they took the quiz. If you haven't taken the quiz, I just encourage you to please take the quiz so you can understand who you are at the DNA level, what you are built for, what your wiring is. It will help you and provide clarity in how you make decisions going forward. And also we talked about how we are doing this together. We are in need of volunteers, co-facilitators, mentors for those of us who have a, a, a vast experience in the data space. You're welcome to join us, even as we journey through. And then also you're encouraged to follow us on our social media platforms so that information dissemination can be much easier and seamless. And so we just went through the data track, the intro to that, the opportunities that avails you and what you can, what you can look forward to experience even as we journey through this 12, 12 week or weekend um, track as well. And then um, the opportunities that you can grapple with, you can engage with and what can be if you take this seriously. Again, it's important to keep your why handy. Uh, I know that some of us, we have vision boards and all of that. So if you can keep your why, you know, this is why I'm going to come into, come into class early. This is why I'm going to clear my system. This is why, this is why, this is why. It's gonna help you stay motivated through. It's also going to help you when you encounter challenges and all so you can know how to navigate that. So this is where we will call it a wrap. If there is no question, we will just call it a wrap here and see you in the room. Hope that we will get um, a number of DMs saying, oh, I want to be a community manager, or I want to be a class assistant, I want to be, so to say, course rep, as the case may be, so that we can... Okay. I think we have a question. Yes, please, good evening. Please, good um, um, yeah, good evening. Please, um, thank you for the class. Thank you so much. It was insightful. Two things I want to ask. First is, um, I hope this um, um, recording will be available because I, I joined in the class a bit late. I joined in, but I don't know if the admin was not ready at the time I came in. So I lost track of time. And then by the time I joined in, I saw that they had started. So I want to know if the class, this particular class would be, um, that is um, recorded, will be shared afterwards. Then that's number one. Number two, for the, um, the DNA, um link you talked about is it also is it also going to be available on the whatsapp platform so that we can check for some of us that can link okay. okay you're welcome so the first thing the first question you asked is if the recording is going to be available yes the recording is going to be made available and second as well the in fact the link is still in the chat box i see that i immediately but i just posted this one minute ago so you can please grab that link and take the quiz. Well, yes, it will also be posted in the yes in the um, chat box. And for your question, Emuoya Faith Walla, pardon my pronunciation. We have the roles for facilitators for those who have a breadth of experience in data, mentors as well, community managers for those who you know, some of us who are gifted in that regard of managing communities and then admins. Those are the roles that we have open right now. You are free to shoot a DM to any of the admins on the group and we will get you set up properly. All right, so this is where we call it a wrap. Can we get the slides? Yes, the slides as well. 
will be made available. Please keep me honest. Um, Mr. Michael, right? I have a question. Okay, just a second, Ruth. Mr. Michael Busola, the slides we've made available for the community, yes? Can you hear me? Yeah? Can you hear me? Yes, please. Okay, um, I don't know. I think that's okay. It's, it's really funny. I, I just feel since we have been talking about this, um, um, what do we call them? Volunteers. I just thought to share, um, let us hear on um, what we are doing actually. Um, as you can see, that um, a lot all of us are in this room at no churches, so um, we have a vision of taking this to the end of the earth, and by that, I mean that. Um, we have a lot more of this to do. So if this sounds parallel to what you're passionate about and then you want to be part of us, yes, um, our rooms are open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave on this, on the, on this, the in-call message box, I'm going to leave fake in transit email, um, which all of us should have already. So you could um, send us a mail for those who we want to, um pick any of those roles we spoke of and he on in on a more deeper level you um you feel we should talk yes so just just shoot us an email um there are things i may not be able to say so there are some campuses i will be visiting very soon we have those conversations going on already um um and some faith-based institutions too right so um if you are in that space and you feel that um yeah, we should do this together. Please just reach out. We are open to collaborations. The more, the merrier. The idea is to empower everyone that we meet along. This with us to reach out. Yes, yeah, so classes continue in the chat room. And from what um, Busola has told us, and of course, um, weekend like this we're going to have live sessions so we can go over practical classes on the things that we're going to be doing at, at, at the individual level during the week right so classes continue we just enable conversation on the whatsapp group so questions but please let's keep it related to data analysis so that it doesn't look like a marketplace thank you Owen. all right thank you all right, thank you. Uh, this question says, please, what time is our classes? Ugungo Victor is 4 p.m. on Saturdays, the same time we are occurring, same time. All right, so. Okay. The classes are typically going to be for, uh, let me allow Busola to respond to this as we round this off in the next few minutes. The classes are going to be for how long? All right. So it's supposed to be a two hour um, class, um, but please schedule three hours because most likely we will do two hours together. And then the last hour will be, you know, people who might still be in the room, who have not finished one or two things, who are still working, and then we're just trying to help you make sure that you finished everything. We're answering questions, we're troubleshooting and all. So please, definitely we'll be together for two hours and then the last hour probably it might be breakout sessions, it might be practical work. You will need to plan for three hours. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Volunteering, is it only for Nigerians? Hmm. Michael, please, you want to take this question? Well, of course not. Of course not. It's, it's not only just for Nigerians. I don't know where, which part of the world you are, but no, it's, 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 it's not just for Nigerians, so you're free to. Yeah, thank you. All right. All right, thank you very much everyone for joining again. I hope this has been worth your while.
and please just schedule your schedule in your calendar 4 p.m or 3 55 because it's also good that we are in the room early so we can make the most of the moment we are settled laptops are ready it's fully loaded and battery charged so we can make the most of the classes till then next week saturday is the time we'll see have a good chat on the group and stay data centric bye for now thank you everyone bye bye thank you thank you very much thank you bye bye thank you thank you bye. thank you very much god bless you thank you thank you bye thank you. Thank, Thank you for this opportunity. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Bye. Thank you, Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.